This clay tutorial is all about texture and making decorative coils. My slab is about one day old. It's been flat on a shelf in a Ziploc bag overnight, and it's a little bit hard, which is the perfect carving consistency. Start by planning out your design, gently pressing into your slab with either a needle tool, or what I like to use with my students is one of these bamboo shish kebab sticks. We're making trees and we want the trunk of our tree close to the center of your tile and several branches extending all the way off the edge. Don't worry about too much detail. You can always change or add to your design later. I like to make my coils directly on the table. My piece of canvas always moves around and it picks up the little crusties that are left on it. So you're gonna take a small piece of clay and wedge it in your hand. And then with both hands, you're gonna gently roll back and forth until it starts to look kind of like a rope. Once your coil gets a little longer, you can spread your hands out, but using both hands is key. We're making tiny decorative coils today. Usually I tell my students that your coil should not be smaller than your index finger, um, but today's coils are not being used for support. They're being used for decoration. So I'm going to break all of my rules and I'm gonna roll really tinily, Let's try that again. Tiny noodle-like coils. Got it. If your coil breaks, no sweat. You're gonna be making a bunch of them. Let's speed things up a little bit. I am rolling not this fast. I just sped the video up so that you could see how many coils I'm going to make. Did you know you can twist and braid coils? Let me show you how to do it just overlap the coils and twist them together. Mine always breaks, so I use them for my shorter pieces. And braiding, you're gonna attach three at the top and you're gonna crisscross over using a braiding style. If you don't know how to braid, just watch me do it. I'm sure there's some other YouTuber out there that has a great video on how to braid. You will be using your coils to make your design a raised surface. So I like to plan it out first and I plan out which coils I'm gonna use for which part of my tree. Try to find your skinniest coils for the small branches. And of course, the thicker branches for the trunk and the middle branches. You don't have to use braids or twist. I'm gonna show you how to do it both ways. If you want to jazz up your work of art and you feel confident with this technique, try substituting some twisties or some braids for some of your more interesting branches. Once you're happy with your layout, it's time for the most important technique of all. Score, slip, and blend. Clay only sticks together when it has moisture unless you score, slip, and blend it. What you see me doing is called the scoring. You scratch hatch marks in your clay going both directions. This is the slip. It's a little messy and all it is is clay and water. Set the score marks touching. The score marks have to touch so the slip can really get in the cracks and crevices. Your work is not done yet. Blending is super important. You wanna blend with your finger or a tool the edges so that you can't see your score marks. You're gonna do this on every single piece that you're adding to your slab. Score, slip, and blend. With your pieces with braids and twists, just carefully put the score marks on the surface. Because it's not flat, it might be a little trickier, but do your best work to cover the surface with your score marks.
Now that you've seen me do it slow, I'm gonna speed things up so that you can see this step complete. As a final step, I like to take a paintbrush with a little bit of slip on it and go around each of my coils. Because it's so difficult to blend these tiny coils with my finger or a clay tool, this step really allows for the slip to get in the cracks and for it to be blended. Don't use water, don't use really heavy slip. The more water you add to this, the more fragile your tile will be. So add just enough slip so it kind of smooths out all of the surfaces. And I do suggest rotating your tile so you can see it from all directions. Now that your design is finished and all your coils are carefully scored, slipped, and blended, it's time for the fun part, texture. Clay has a memory, so anything you put and press into clay will stay there, unless you smooth it back out. Try a variety of different tools. For example, this is the same shish kebab stick that I've been using the whole time, and it makes two different circle marks that I'm gonna show you today. Anything can be pressed into clay to make a texture or a carving. Just don't press down too hard. You wanna just gently scratch the surface. Let's speed things up. Anything you don't like can be smudged out and redone. Once you've added all your textures, touch-ups are really important. Clay can be kind of messy and kind of ugly if you don't take the time to refine it. This bamboo skewer is my favorite tool for cleaning. I could obsessively clean this tile for hours and hours. What you're seeing me do is taking the fine point and the fatter point and cleaning up all those little crispies. I'm adding a fine line, but I'm not pressing down into the tile. If I press down too deep, the tile will fall apart and become weak. This is day three, I believe, with this tile, so it's starting to get more dry. It's not leather hard yet, but it is pretty sturdy. When your clay is leather hard, so it has dried out to the point where you can barely bend it, um, that is the perfect time to clean your crispies and to refine your fine lines. Don't forget about the edges of your tile. Be careful though, you don't wanna break or chip any of the corners. When my clay is leather hard or sooner, I'm gonna use a needle tool, which is my favorite tool, to poke two holes in my tile so that I can attach a wire and hang it on a wall once it's out of the kiln. Be careful where you put your holes. If you put it too close to the edge, it might knock that corner right off. My final step is always taking a dry, clean brush and scraping away the crispies. This gives it a nice clean effect so it's kiln ready. Once it's completely bone dry, it's gonna go in the kiln to be fired. Perfect for glazing, perfect for painting.